to invite our speaker this morning. He's a poet, he's a teacher, he's a writer, he's a journalist, and he is a religious science practitioner and a minister here at the Temple of Light. And he will bring you, I'm sure, much wit and much humor um, wrapped up, so to speak, in the wonderful um, clothing of truth. Please welcome Reverend Michael Record. We will try, Sandy, we will try. <laughs> testing, testing, testing. I want you to help me make the center great again. <laughs> right, everybody can hear me. Good morning, friends. Here, here in the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica, or listening to me online. My talk is titled, How Are You Feeling Now? <laughs> From your laughter, I could tell you've been listening to the news. <laughs> and know that our good friend up to the north, America, just took an unexpected, amazing, no, astounding decision as a result of which the world may never be the same again. <laughs> I'm not going to talk politics, but I must tell you about this email that Reverend John forwarded to me on Friday as I was thinking about this message. It's from a CSL minister, Reverend Ron Fox. And it runs, my wife and I just read an article that there is a movement that began in England with Brexit and has moved to the US. In order to show people who are feeling threatened by our political climate that you are with them, wear a safety pin on your clothes. It will show people of color, Muslims, women, and LGBT people, they are safe with you. We, Reverend Fox and his wife, will be wearing safety pins beginning today. Why not join us and send a message of love to people who are feeling fear and anxiety about their future? That was the email. I'm still not talking politics, but you do know that for the past five nights, since Tuesday's momentous decision by our American friends, tens of thousands of people have been marching in protests in some 25 cities across the nation. They are some of the people, Reverend Fox referred to, who are feeling fear and anxiety about their future. The protests and the fear are quite unprecedented. And that anxiety is felt by many others around the world, including Jamaicans. But that anxiety is dangerous. What do we followers of Science of Mind say to people like the protesters? We say that the more fear and anxiety they feel about their future, the more they'll get to feel fear and anxiety about. We have all got to be optimistic about our future. The way the world works is that our feeling attracts what it is like. Good feeling attracts good people, things, and conditions. Negative feeling attracts the opposite. It's called the law of attraction. As I'm not talking politics, I won't mention the name of either the winner or the loser of the American popularity contest. We'll call it that just ended. But when my sister, Hillary, 1L, visits again from Washington, DC, you can easily get her to trump Trumpet the name of the person 
she favored in the race. I call no names. <laughs> Political jokes, fortunately, though, are allowed from the podium. And here's one that I like. A conservative was driving home too fast one night and smashed his car into a car driven by a liberal. The conservative got out of the car, apologized profusely, and offered the liberal a drink from a bottle of whiskey. The liberal, who was quite shaken by the accident, was glad to have the drink. He took a swig and started handing back the bottle. But the conservative pushed it away. No, 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 go on, go on, have another. After a second mouthful, the liberal asked, don't you want one too? Uh, perhaps I will have one, replied the conservative, taking out his cell phone, right after the police have gone. <laughs> That is sinking in. <laughs> Despite evidence to the contrary, some politicians do think ahead. Right, enough of politics for now. The optimism message that I mentioned just now is one that Reverend John, Reverend Anne, Carol Charlton, and I are taking to two corporate area prisons. Reverend John and I go through seven iron gates and doors to get to our class in the chapel situated in the heart of Tower Street Correctional Center, AKA the General Penitentiary or GP. I find it somewhat ironic that we have to go through so many entrances to reach the spiritual center of the institution but we could say that the journey is symbolic, symbolic of the effort it takes for us to go within. We could also remember that what are entrances to us are exit to those who reside in the GP. And those doors and gates are designed not to keep visitors out, but to keep the inmates in. In fact, Written in large letters over one of the gates are the words, in caps, none shall escape. <laughs> we, we see it every time we go out. <laughs> Fortunately, we are not escaping. Really. <laughs> uh, one of the inmates in our class, about a dozen or so young men, is a young man who I had been noticing before last user's class was always playing with a gold watch he had, wearing it sometimes on his wrist and sometimes holding it in his hand. On Tuesday, he put it on the book rest of his chair. And another inmate who coincidentally has the same name accidentally bounced it to the ground, concrete. The owner grabbed it up immediately, and when he looked at it, I could see distress on his face. Reverend John saw it too, and he asked the young man if the watch was broken. Tears welling up in his eyes, and I'd never seen an inmate cry before. Tears in his eyes, lips pressed tightly together. The young man said nothing, but he nodded and held the watch out to us. The glass face was indeed broken. But when I examined the watch closely, I saw that it was still working. Now, it had been obvious to me from previous classes that the watch meant a lot to the owner. And as I continued to observe him, his eyes downcast, his face showing pain, I suspected he felt like doing his namesake some physical harm. Remember, it's a maximum security prison for men who commit serious crimes, many of them violent. Now, we live on the earth plane and the heaven plane simultaneously, 
You may remember that talk. And speaking from the earth plane, those men are not angels. But I hasten to add that from the higher plane, they are spiritual beings. As I looked at that young man fighting back tears and anger after his watch face smashed, I thought of Jesus' statement, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, verse 21. I don't know if the young man is in prison for many months or many years, but I reasoned that while he was in prison, his treasure was the watch. And his heart got broken when the watch did. Ironically, he could have stayed away from class on Tuesday. Half of his classmates did. We were told that Tuesday was a no lockdown day, meaning that for the day, the majority of the inmates were not locked in their cells at 3 o'clock until 7 o'clock the next morning, by the way, as usually happened. They were allowed to roam relatively freely around the prison, going to places they couldn't normally go, and seeing fellow inmates they wouldn't usually see. I say the majority of the inmates were allowed that freedom because there is a sort of inner city in the institution, a fenced off area that contains men thought to be homosexual. They were not allowed to roam free that day. They are not allowed to mix with the general prison population at any time. When we, Reverend John and I, taught a batch of them earlier this year, they came by themselves. And in case you're wondering, we found them no different from the numerous other inmates we have been teaching for the past three years. They looked the same, they were just as intelligent, they were just as spiritual. So the men in our class on Tuesday came because they preferred class to the unexpected freedom they could have enjoyed. That was their treasure. And when you remember that freedom is the treasure that the imprisoned men, imprisoned people most desire, naturally, it is a wonder that we had any students on Tuesday. I am now wondering if the young watch owner regrets choosing class over roaming about in view of what happened. I hope the treasure he got from the class compensates for the treasure, the watch face broken, that he lost. I also hope that he knows the watch glass can be replaced. When next a friend or relative visits him, he could give the watch to that person and who to take to a repair shop. I wonder, too, if he sees any significance to the fact that his name and the classmate who accidentally caused the watch to break has his name. The inmates are taught, as students in our classes here are taught, that we bring our adversities on ourselves as we bring our benefits. I wonder if he, and maybe others, would go on to remember or acknowledge that after that incident that they were in prison because of their own actions. Some do admit it. Some others still blame other people or blame the system. The aim of the course is to get them to take responsibility for their lives. If they do, they can change their thinking and change their lives. That's the name of the course. I wonder if the watch owner sees as a metaphor for his life the fact that though the face of the watch is broken, the heart continues to beat perfectly. Just as inside he is spiritually perfect, though he committed some crime. 
if he really is thinking deeply, he might realize not only that he and his namesake are one, but that he is one with all humanity, part of the one mind. We tell them that, of course, but often students need more than just telling. They need a demonstration. Which brings me back to the demonstrations that have been taking place in America because the participants are worried about their future. For them, Jesus has some really beautiful words of comfort. I quote him as I conclude this talk. I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his splendor was not dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which uh, is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well." Unquote. Let us remember those words. Our Jamaican elections will also be held this month. Namaste. Thank you.